Today, I'm very happy to be joined by Bradley Jackson, the director of the new documentary, Facing Nolan, about the legendary baseball pitcher, Nolan Ryan, showing his career. And of course, many great stories. Thank you so much for joining uh, this afternoon. Bradley, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And uh, I know I just told you in the introduction, but I think as a fan, uh, this is my little baby. This is this is Josie. We watch. All She's excited to be on the show too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, super glad to have you on. And um, uh, Facing Nolan is now available digitally. Um, it was released three days ago. Um, it also had a premiere at South by Southwest in Austin. Um, how did that go, by the way? How was that reception? That reception was amazing. Uh, you know, I'm from Texas. I'm from I'm from Houston. If you can't tell from the. Yeah. But I grew up, I spent, uh, I went to college at the University of Texas in Austin. And so to get to premiere uh, the film in what I feel like is my home away from home, Austin, was really special. And the fact that Nolan was sitting maybe five feet away from me watching the movie for the first time was also pretty cool. Yeah, that's actually really amazing. And, um, you know, I've seen a lot of great reviews. The movie's been, um, you know, um, people have just loved it. And it's great to see that. Um, but I want to talk about, you know, I want to talk about you a little bit. How did how did you get into the business of filmmaking and uh, kind of reach where you are now? Yeah, I, it's always been a passion of mine. Uh, you know, I think I, I grew up and I wanted to be a, a sports, you know, an athlete. Yeah. Uh, usually, at, you know, as you're when you're a kid, usually I started with wanting to be a baseball player, then a basketball player. Then I realized I didn't have the skills or the abilities to do that. So I started pivoting into more creative endeavors. And uh, I loved movies. I was, I was always the kid who wanted to go see, you know, The Matrix on opening weekend or Austin Powers on opening weekend or something like that. So I was bringing my friends out and I started making movies in high school when I was, you're 18? Yeah, I'm 18. Yes. Yeah, I started making movies when I was 18 years old. Uh, I wow. would take a camera out and I would just, I, I would star in them because I would have to be the only actor there okay. and half the time. And I would convince my friends, I'd be like, hey, come on, you, you can eat pizza for free at my house. You can come over and just like read these scenes with me while I'm, while we're acting. And it's, we ended up having a great time. And then I went to film school at UT Austin. And I started making, uh, at, once I graduated from film school, um, I stuck around Austin for about 10 years because uh, I wanted to make movies in Texas for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I made a bunch of short films, which I think is the best way for young people to like understand what they're good at in filmmaking is making short films. So anywhere from three minutes to 20 minutes. Um, some of them were, you know, a couple hundred bucks funded. Some of them yeah. I was able to get, a, you know, between 20 and $30,000, like, wow. you know, amassed and, um, a couple of them were, you know, successful. And then uh, just, it's like any career over, you know, you just, you start like you're 18 years old and you already have your own show. So, yeah. I mean, when you're my age, uh, you're going to have, you know, an empire. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very kind of you. And, uh, you know, that's great to hear about your journey. And, you know, I'm going to shift to the movie here. What was kind of the motivation for uh, making and directing uh, uh, Facing Nolan? Well, again, I grew up in uh, I grew up in Houston, and so and I was a huge sports fan. And so, when you're a sports fan in 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 Texas, growing up in the '80s and '90s, you're you know Nolan Ryan is like the number one athlete. It's like Nolan Ryan and Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> uh, and so I was, you know, I I worked on a bunch of documentaries in like a producing capacity or a, or a writing capacity. I'd never directed a documentary before, and uh, I had the idea and I pitched it to a really good uh, friend of mine who had worked in major league baseball in the, in the uh, media department over there. Yeah. And he told me, he's like, that's a great idea, but how are you going to get Nolan Ryan to sign off on this? Yeah. Nolan's kind of, he's a very nice guy, but he's not exactly somebody that seeks attention mm. that a documentary brings. And so uh, I created a very like detailed creative treatment um, with the movie, you know, and I just wrote it out all on paper. It's called Facing Nolan and it's very similar to what you see. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get the treatment in the hands yeah. of Nolan's uh, son. And he said, let's get a meeting set up. Yeah. And we pitched it to the whole family, except Nolan. Nolan decided he didn't want to show up. 
pictures of the whole family and they were all like we want to do this now we just have to go convince our dad yeah and it, took, it took nolan's wife ruth to uh to be the one that talked him into it so that's how it, that's how it all got started yeah that's great to hear that's a great story right there um and you know how long did it take to you know i guess fully uh produce the movie and like pretty much finish it up yeah it took about uh, 16 months from start to finish, which is in the film business is very fast. Yeah. Uh, like I had the idea, I had the idea in July of 2020 and we finished the movie in February, 2022. So, yeah. um, but I always figured no one throws the, through the fastest pitch of all time. We should yeah. be equally as fast in making the film. <laughs> that's really funny. Um, you know, but that's great to hear um, how well the movie's been done um it's really awesome um and you know where was the shooting done for uh, the majority of it like when you interviewed um all those uh, great players and stuff yeah obviously we spent a lot of time filming in texas uh we filmed nolan's interview at the round rock stadium uh the dell diamond which he owns which is pretty cool that he owns a baseball yeah. stadium <laughs> um we got to film i think as a, as a houstonian I got to, I got to, we got to film uh, Craig Biggio in the Astrodome, wow. which was pretty amazing. I mean, like Craig Biggio, I mean, it seems like Altuve is probably your favorite player. Yeah. Craig Biggio is the Altuve of my day. Yeah. Um, and so getting to interview him in the Astrodome was, was pretty magical. And, uh, but then, you know, we got to go to Cooperstown, New York, which is where the Baseball Hall of Fame is. That was really special. Um, so just, I mean, this tri the, the, the film took us all over the country in a really cool way, everywhere from Arizona to Vegas, to LA, uh, to Florida, to New York. So pretty great. Yeah, that's great to hear about, you know, going all over the country to get this uh, film done. Um, you know, how many people were um, hired for the making of this? Was it like you and a few others or like how many people did you try and get? Yeah, it's a very documentaries are are really cool because it's a it's a it's a tight knit unit. It's a small mm -hmm. crew, um, so we had about a usually like if I had to pick the you know the people that are responsible for making this movie great from making making the film, it's there's a director, me, there's a producer, uh, there's usually two producers, and then there's like a camera guy, uh, a second camera guy, a sound guy and uh usually like you know some production assistance and and then that's that's for making the movie and then obviously in my mind i think the most important person in any documentary uh is the editor mm -hmm. and so i was very lucky to work with a great editor um who had edited a lot of stuff for major league baseball and who edited a lot of stuff for the nfl because uh, when you're making a documentary, so much of the, the process is in the edit room. Because you go shoot, you know, we shot 35 interviews, each of them about an hour to an hour and a half long. Wow. So, and the movie, the final cut of the movie is 97 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, how do you yeah. go through 36 to 40 hours of footage? And that's not even including, you know, all the highlights of Nolan playing baseball growing up. So, you know. Yeah. It's, it's that, it, you know, I always, anytime a young documentary filmmaker is like, one piece of advice, what do you give me? I say, find a good editor. Yeah, I can yeah. see that, you know, it's really important in documentaries, you know, in baseball documentaries, I've seen like NFL films, they come out with, you know, different pieces on different players. So yeah, I mean, editing is definitely a really important piece to the puzzle here, but um, what were kind of the production steps to making it? Like, what were, what was the first thing you had to do and then um, to... I guess to build it, what was kind of the steps in that? Yeah, well, the first thing was getting Nolan on board. Uh, yeah. So thankfully, thanks to Ruth Ryan for that. Um, and then, um, you know, we started, we pretty much started, the first interview I did was with Ruth Ryan. Um, and then the second interview I did was with Nolan Ryan. Yeah. And then the third interview I did was with Reed Ryan. And then the fourth interview was with Reese Ryan. So those are his two sons and his wife and, and then him. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, that was the foundation of the movie because I, 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 I thought this would be a great family story because oftentimes with, you know, huge superstar athletes, it's not super common that they're still with the woman that they met in high school. And, you know, that no one's such a, um, 
he's such a class act and he's such a family man. I wanted, I really wanted to ground him in family and then make, you know, the seven no hitters and the 5,000 plus strikeouts and the 325, 24 wins. I wanted to then, you know, then put that in context of this great, just a good dad and good husband. Yeah, I really like how you brought into that family perspective. Obviously, everyone knows about, you know, how great he was, but to bring that, I think that element in is really good. Um, and how did you decide um, which players to interview uh, for the documentary? Well, yeah, it's tough because, I mean, he played for four teams, yeah. the Mets, the Astros, the Angels, and the Rangers, and he played for 27 years. So yeah, um, it's pretty crazy. Uh, you know, obviously, we knew we were going to film in Texas a lot. Uh, so we really wanted to find as many Astros and Rangers players just because that would help us. You know, we, I remember one day uh, for a week in Houston, we shot two interviews a day for seven days straight, wow. just going over from Art Howe's house to Jose Cruz's house, like just like driving through Houston and just picking up, you know, vintage Astros, 80s Astros players. Um, but then we knew we wanted to surround him with like some big time names, like Hall of Famers. So getting to talk to Randy Johnson, um, Roger Clemens, Pete Rose, Rod Carew, George Brett, uh, and then of course, George W. Bush, you know, former yeah. president. So, you know, you want your star power, you know, Nolan's got plenty of star power, but if you can surround it, anytime you can, you know, put a, anytime you can put uh, seven Hall of Famers in your baseball documentary, you do. I'll just say that. Yeah, that's really special. I think that's what makes it um, even more great. And really for the younger generation of Astros fans like myself, you know, uh, I we never had the chance to watch Nolan Ryan pitch, but what we do say is like something about Nolan that, that we should really know. I think young people, it's been really cool for young, for like, I've had some like, you know, young people who play baseball come up to me after the movie and say it's inspired them to want to practice more. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're never going to be, you know, first of all, Nolan Ryan is a once in a generation talent. Mm -hmm. um and so you know you can't expect to be throwing 108 miles an hour but you can work as hard you can work as hard as no one around that's the one thing you can control is how hard you can work and the other thing too that i always like to say is like no one anytime he would pitch he's like verlander anytime he pitches I'm, i bet the astros sell another 5,000 tickets just to watch yeah. him. no one would be like you know he's playing for the angels in the 70s and they weren't very good and so you know, when the guy before him was pitching, 20,000 people would show up. When Nolan pitched, 35,000 people would show up. Because yeah. you just never know what he's going to do. And I think that's that's the same case for the movie. Like, Nolan just was an entertaining guy to watch pitch. And I think he's an entertaining guy to watch or film. Yeah, for sure. You know, this season, I remember going to an Astros game just to watch Justin Verlander pitch. So, yeah, you too. see why uh, Nolan Ryan, you know, for sure must have drawn more crowds, obviously, because of how great he was. Um and, you know, obviously the great accomplishments. I just found it really strange that, you know, he never won a Cy Young and he probably really deserved that quite a bit. Yeah, and it's funny. The only person who cares about him not winning a Cy Young is his wife. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people care. His sons care. And I think Nolan obviously would have liked to have won a Cy Young. Uh -huh. but, uh, but he doesn't seem to, like, hold it against anybody. And it was, a, you know, he played for the Angels back when they weren't very good um and back when obviously back when you know tv you know every every baseball game isn't on some sort of television package or something like that and so uh he wasn't he didn't have the media coverage that a, a lot of these other guys did who were playing in the bigger markets so it but it is one of the all-time egregious overlooks i think in in sports history that no one ryan never won a cy yeah i know i really hope i wish he did but and obviously the accomplishments speak their, speak for themselves. So no hitters, the most strikeouts in MLB history. Um, and I saw that, I think in 1974, I was just looking at his stats. He had like 332 innings pitch, which I think was um, really insane. Uh, there's a stat about Nolan in the set. Nolan's 70 stats are the craziest thing you'll ever see. If you, yeah. if you love pitching and you love the game of baseball, his 1972 like, to like 1975 are just like off the charts. Yeah. I think there was one day where he pitched 200, he threw 235 pitches against wow. uh, the Red Sox. I think he won that game. Yeah. He went into the 11th inning and then he started on three days rest 
and then threw another complete game and won that game. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like that, I mean, like, again, we stand, we stare in awe at people like Justin Verlander as we should, mm-hmm. but I mean, comparing Nolan's stats to any modern day player, it's la- It's just like, they're like, you laugh. You just have to laugh. Yeah. Cause it's just insane about, you know, how much he had to pitch and it just, it, it's just amazing. I'm really glad you made this um, film, but you know, obviously you spoke to a lot of great players as well. I'm sure every one of them was really great to speak to, but um, did a conversation with any particular one uh, really stand out to you? Yeah, that's a great question. I, if I had to pick maybe my favorite interview other than the Ryan family um, from somebody in the game of baseball, yeah. I think Randy, Randy Johnson was a real delight. I think one, because I expected him, maybe I was nervous because I expected him to be more stoic and intimidating because, you know, he's 6'11 and he, you know, threw 100 plus miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, But he was so nice and he was so excited to talk about Nolan. Um, And he was very eloquent in the way he just spoke about Nolan as an artist. Because I think Randy saw pitching as an art form, which it is. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really special. And then getting to interview Pete Rose, it's just a, it was a trip. So those yeah. two, those two were highlights for me for sure. Yeah, for sure. You know, all these Hall of Fame players, some of the greats, I think it must've been an honor to speak to all of them. Um, but what was kind of like, would you be able to share, like, what would be kind of like a really interesting story that you found out about Nolan, um, at all? Yeah, well, one, uh, it, I'll say this. Randy Johnson's career was changed by Nolan Ryan. Uh, Nolan Ryan and Tom House, like there was a moment where um, Randy, I think was in his late twenties and was struggling a little bit. Yeah. And Rand, uh, Nolan and Tom House uh, worked with him one morning on a day when the Rangers were playing the Mariners and fixed a couple of things in his delivery. And then that was the transition from Randy Johnson into the Hall of Famer he is. And Randy told us that story, so that was cool. But two, I think, like, Nolan, Nolan, I I didn't know this going into the project, Nolan was going to quit baseball about seven years into his career. Oh. He pitched for the Mets, and he was just, like, not, he was not a 500 pitcher. He was a struggling, you know, he was a struggling fastball pitcher who wasn't getting quality starts, and he essentially um, was going to quit, and his wife talked him out of it and just said, "You're, you're going to this new team, you're going to the Angels. There's a pitching coach there. He'd never had a real pitching coach. Wow. And this pitching coach sat down with them and fixed some things with him. And then that was the year he was started throwing 300 plus strikeouts a season. The next season he throws two no hitters within a 60 day span. <laughs> Breaks the all time single season strikeout record. So in my mind, the fact that, you know, if, if Ruth Ryan isn't there, I don't think this movie gets made both in the fact that I don't think he has a career worth making a movie about. And two, she just actually talked him into it. So hats off to Ruth. Yeah, obviously hats off to her. She did. Um, I mean, she, she's amazing. And um, a big reason why we're um, talking about Nolan. Um, and I heard that some of that footage of Nolan Ryan, you know, was really hard to find or, you know, wasn't even, wasn't even known. Like that footage must have been really hard to find. So how do you guys manage that? Yeah, we were lucky enough to get to work with Major League Baseball. They gave us a lot of their archives because they uh-huh. they really, you know, they told us that Nolan Ryan is one of the highest valued players that's retired in, in all of MLB. Like he's he might be number one as far as like his popularity. Yeah. Um, but two, you know, baseball didn't keep hasn't kept their, you know, they're they're playing, you know, 162 games times 30 teams. And it's been that way since, you know. 1950 so mm-hmm. they didn't keep their tapes you know yeah so there's there's zero footage of no hitters number three and four no mm-hmm. so um luckily we had footage of no hitters one and two mm-hmm. um but for three and four there's no footage so like that's why we had to like go out and hire a body double to go and go and you know essentially be a stand-in for Nolan. So we, we, we filmed these really beautifully shot, high frame rate shots of, uh, of this pitcher throwing. And we just, that was the only way we could visually convey kind of the, yeah, how cool it was that he threw yeah. 
especially the fourth no hitter because that's when he ties the all time record of Sandy Koufax. Yeah, and you know it's yeah to obviously kind of you know make it happen, and you guys did a great job, of course, put in a lot of effort um into making it. And what would you say something about that that you found out about Nolan that I would say really surprised you um or shocked you? Because for me, you know, obviously I never had the chance to watch him, but you know, looking at you know, videos and seeing the trailer of this uh, documentary, of course, I saw that, you know, he was known to be really intimidating towards batters. Obviously, I saw that incident um, with Robin Ventura and, you know, all that stuff. So what was something that stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, as far as the Robin Ventura of it all, um, I didn't know that it all kind of originated back with a, with an incident that happened to him in 1980. Um, where Dave Winfield, another Hall of Famer, charged him. Um, and so to me, I thought that was such a cool, I mean, I, I was probably, you know, 10, I was nine years old when the Robin Ventura incident happened. Okay. And I still remember watching it with my dad and just like my dad laughing hysterically, <laughs> thinking it was so funny. And it's one of those larger than life moments that just lives on. And you yeah. know, even, you know, people still know about it. And people still talk about it. People still ask him about it all the time. So I wanted to find a way to tell that story in a unique way. Yeah. Um, and telling it through the lens of the, the time before when he was charged by Dave Winfield and how he reacted and then how he decided, okay, if that ever happens again, I'm going to, I'm going to change my stripes a little bit. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a real, and that section in the film is probably my, from just purely from an audience reaction standpoint, that section of the film is just so much fun. Because it's just yeah. so crowd pleasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I'm yeah, I'm sure that was really awesome um, to make. And um, last two questions for you here. So, um, which theaters did this uh, did the documentary play, and where can we find it uh, now? Yeah, so it played in uh, about 700 theaters all over the country as part of a one night only Fathom event screening, and then mm. after that, it stuck around in about. 70 theaters, mostly in Texas. So Edwards Marquis in Houston, it played. Memorial City Mall, it played. Um, it did really well. It actually did the best out of any theater in, in Houston. Oh, really? Um, but right now, if you just go to facingnolan.com, you can find out where, it, where it's playing anywhere. And it's usually, it's on iTunes. It's on Apple iTunes. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's on Vudu and then various on-demand services. But um, yeah, just facingnolan.com takes you to anywhere where you can watch the movie. You can also buy t-shirts, you can buy hats, yeah. you can buy posters. There's a very cool Facing Nolan Astros poster oh, really? um, that, that I love uh, that's on there too. So some cool stuff on there. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that people are able to see the movie now. Yeah, it's really great. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be watching it now that it's on digital, um, really great stuff. And um, I know uh, you're an Astros fan, by the way. So what are, just quickly, what would be your thoughts on the Astros season so far? Because clearly, to me, they're looking like the best team in baseball. Yeah, okay. I'm so glad you asked me this question. The Astros are the best team in baseball. Um, and we don't even have Lance McCullers Jr. Yeah. back. And Brantley's out. I mean, watching the doubleheader yesterday with the Yankees, yeah. I mean, I, there's just no doubt that we were going to win both those games. Yeah. I know they, they got close in a couple moments. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just hope that we can stay healthy um, and that come October, Lance is firing on all cylinders, Verlander's yeah. firing on all cylinders, Jordan and Altuve. Look, if, if Bregman stays hot the way he is and then the rest of the guys are playing the way they are and we get Michael Brantley back and Lance Polish Jr. back, I don't, I don't think anybody can stop us. I'll just say it. I don't think anybody can stop us. But then again, I didn't think anybody could stop us in 2019. So yeah. it's, it's so tough. Winning a World Series is just like everything. Like, you know, nobody thought the Braves were going to win the World Series yeah. at this time last year. At this mm -hmm. time last year, the Braves were just like a, a you know, slightly above average team. And then they, they got hot at the right time. Yeah, the Astros have been hot all year, mm -hmm. so like sometimes you get worried about when a team is too good because you like they're gonna cool down eventually. But yeah, I have faith in these guys; they have the experience, and for what it's worth, I just think they're the most fun team to watch. Yeah, for sure, I definitely agree. And um, just a matter of getting it done. I mean, postseason they've shown they can do that, and just getting healthy. Yeah, I mean, still agree with you on all that. And last one before we go, what what are you working on? 
you know, after facing all that we can probably look forward to. Yeah. So another documentary I've been working on, you may not, have you ever heard of the music band from the nineties, Millie Vanilli? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't. Well, look them up. Um, there it's, it's one of the most interesting stories in music history. Um, and it's a, it's a famous scandal about their, their music and how they made their music. So I've um, been working on that for about a year. It should, it, I think it'll come out around this time next year. So uh, it's about Millie Vanilli. Tell your, tell your fans to look at that. Yeah, for sure I will. And uh, you know, thank you so much Bradley for joining me today and speaking. Um, really appreciate it, really enjoyed this. And um, um, I'll be posting the interview soon. So if you can uh, give it a retweet and also follow me if you can, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay.